Software is all around us, and sometimes inside us. But what happens when the tools we use are obeying someone else? A tool you control serves your interests, but if someone else controls it, they serve their own. When you can examine tools to see how they work, you're able to learn about them, even modify them to work differently or better. When you can share a tool and its changes, you help others, and in turn, they help you. In fact, this is how early computing developed. Everyone could see a program's code, and people shared their work freely to drive its growth. Every user was a potential author. But when companies began to lock source code away, it stopped being possible to participate, or even to know what the code was doing. In response, hackers formed the GNU project to create a computer system designed to respect the autonomy of users. They adopted a copyleft maneuver and built it into the GNU General Public License, a legal structure that preserves user rights. In 10 short years, the free software movement had produced the GNU Linux system, computing that nobody could own but anyone could use. Today it's keeping planes in the air, stocks trading, and the global internet running. We all encounter free software in invisible ways, but software freedom was designed for people. It's about what shape the technology we inhabit will take, and what kind of society we use our digital powers to build. We've still got work to do.